Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. What you're looking at right now is called the Mini Hawk. It's a three motor VTOL aircraft and it is this one is 3D printed. It's 3D printable and actually open source as well. We're going to take a look at this aircraft and chase it around and we're going to get some backstory from its designer Steve Carlson. We're going to do all that right after I say thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. In case you don't know, PCBWay makes custom printed circuit boards. That's what PCB stands for and they have thousands of components to choose from and can even assemble all those components per your specifications and put it on the board and test it before it even arrives at your door to make sure it's working. If PCBs aren't your thing though, they also offer rapid prototyping services to include sheet metal bending, CNC machining, 3D printing, and injection molding, and in various materials to suit your project needs. If that sounds interesting, I'll have a link to them down in the description below this video, and you can check them out. And I believe there's a $5 um, new person coupon uh, if you use my link. If that sounds at all interesting, Check them out in the description below this video. Now, let's get back to the Mini Hawk. I've been designing RC airplanes my entire life. From when I was just in, well, grade school, drawing airplanes on the back of my homework assignments, all the way through model rockets and designing my own RC airplanes and going to an international science and engineering fair as a high school student with my own UAV designs. Suffice it to say, I've been doing this for a while, and when you and I first met there in DC, you saw me carrying around the very first prototype of the Mini Hawk. Yeah. The Mini Hawk was my second generation VTOL design. Some years prior, I'd made a VTOL using MultiWii, which was the great great granddaddy of Betaflight. And uh, that VTOL flew pretty well, and I'd written a paper about that in my college years. So I had at that point been in Boston for two and a half years, and I still had my Autodesk Inventor license, educational versions. I'd gotten a 3D printer, and I wanted to make a mostly open access, anyone can print, minimal viable VTOL. I designed this most of the way by the time it was, what, March and April of 2020? And uh, when I showed up to do grad school here, I was elated and surprised that, hey, my advisor's like, would you like to keep going with this? So I have continued to develop this, and I have thus far successfully finished, or at least converged the design to a very viable design. So what you see here is a VTOL, which is in the tricopter tilt rotor configuration. So we have two rotors right here that can tilt. So each of those goes forward independently. And then we have a rear rotor that is only for lifting. So that rear rotor here only produces lift when it's in hover mode. And when it goes into forward flight, if you use these gym fan folding props, they'll just fold back in the airflow and it's the least amount of drag you can do. Mm. I like the tricopter configuration because it is the simplest and the cheapest way to do a VTOL. It doesn't require like a quad plane where you have to have four rotors plus a puller. And uh, there are other variants where they only do four rotors where you have the front two rotors that tilt forward. But you still have at least two propellers that are just dead weight and mm -hmm. drag. Even if you try to clean it up, having the props rotate and align themselves with the flow, it still is complicated. You only need one dead propeller, one dead weight motor in the back for the tricopter configuration. And then you're wildly overpowered when you have this twin motor design here. Mm. And uh, there is a mild compromise though. You have the mechanical complexity of having two servos. A lot of designers don't like that. And larger VTOLs, and especially those separate lift plus thrust configurations like a quad plane, they don't want to have the added me mechanical complexity of having tilting mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I like the tilting mechanism. It just feels cleaner and it, I, I just like it. It's mm. a tradition, I suppose, from my past experience of the last decade doing VTOL. But uh, the other compromise is that now your front rotors have to double as a forward flight propeller system, propulsion system, but they also have to have sufficiently low disc loading and proper control authority for when you're in hover. So we do have a mildly complicated optimization problem trying to get these front rotors to go in the Goldilocks zone. Mm -hmm. Not too much thrust, not too little thrust. Last October, September, October, we did a demonstration with this where it actually did the migratory mission. It actually went in the desert and technically multi-day mission. It was really 24 hours since we didn't want to camp out for multiple days in the desert. It was hard enough doing one day. Yeah. But this yeah. guy here, 
actually we set him down in the desert mm -hmm. and for three and a half hops basically it took off flew to a site and landed charged itself mm -hmm. took off flew to another site landed there charged itself took off flew itself back to the home base and landed and that was the end of the day after 24 oh, wow. hours on the bottom i'll show you the bottom of this vehicle we have multiple cameras. We have something called the Intel T265 tracking camera. It actually uses two cameras here in stereo view, stereo vision, to do something called visual slam, simultaneous localization and mapping. What this is technically called is a visual inertial odometry sensor. So this guy doesn't exactly return a structured map of the environment. There are, there are other cameras that do that, though, from the same family. What this one does specifically, though, is it looks straight down at the ground and it provides very, very accurate movement information. It's essentially what you have in most DJI drones and commercial mm -hmm. level drones. We just want to have it here in our research grade vehicle. So that way, even though GPS gets us to about 20 degrees, or 20 degrees, 20 centimeters of mm -hmm. spatial resolution, the T265 gets us to about two centimeters of accuracy. Wow. The other camera is a standard USB camera that we can put on different lenses. That USB camera allows us to take high resolution imagery. Mm -hmm. And in this thing's case, we use it for stuff like landing on top of Spot. Would you like to see the robot dog? Yes. This is the Boston Dynamic Spot. It costs what? a pretty penny. What? We're probably one of the only labs in the state what? that has one. There might be other labs we don't know about. It's just like. It's like super cool and also terrifying. <laughs> like it is this. <laughs> yes, we have a landing pad for Spot. I'm going to show you. It's on the back of Spot, just about like this. So this one is called Nosy Nikki the Orange. It used to be called Nosy Nikki the Gray. And then it died, sort of, like Gandalf. And now it came back as Nosy Nikki the Orange with an orange body instead of a gray body. So, Nosy Nikki the Orange, this guy has a few wires on landing legs. I mentioned the solar-powered airplane there. Mm -hmm. It has 5 to 10 watts that can charge itself on. That takes about 4 hours, 3.5 hours on a sunny day to charge. But what if we want to have this vehicle charge a little bit faster, but we still want to have it be mostly autonomous? That's why we have these cables here, and those are going to connect to, if you zoom in on the middle finger here, we have electrical contacts. Got an electrical contact there, and another, if you want to go to this side, another electrical contact. Ah, okay, so, so these fingers rotate, oh, so it will capture, as soon as it lands, it will capture the mini hawk. So it would have the fingers just like that, and then the mini hawk is pretty well captured at that point. And then it, it makes contact with the charger? Yeah. Oh, ah, that's cool. Wow. And then uh, when those claws engage, Spot can try to shake like a dog shaking water, and uh, the robot won't fall off. This is the most beat up of the mini hawks. This yeah. is the one that I keep for personal use because there's no reason to have this in the lab because it's like the the very ugly stepdaughter that we keep hidden <laughs> from the other beautiful ones in the lab. Wow! But it gets to have all the fun anyway. The other ones, the other ones are like prima donnas. They just sort of. <laughs> stay in the lab and look pretty and they get to do their flights but this one gets to have all the fun in the real world to the side so that when you start it won't blow dust in my face it won't blow dust in my face all right and Ready? arming <laughs> I'm about to head over. Three, two, one. I'm over us. Straight over us, heading towards the sun. I'm now going to the edge of the park. Oh, I see you just barely. Yeah. Now I'm cruising around. Just barely. Come get me. I'm opposite us now. Other I'm side of the park, south fence. And I'm about to ride up along the east fence now. Yep, I see you. East fence, 20 meters.
And I'm coming straight up to the lock okay. now. Yeah, that's a good speed if you can kind of hold that speed. Yeah, that's as slow as I can go. I'm about 16 meters a second. And I just saw you go ahead of me, I think. Yeah, I kind of went under you. Okay, you ready? I'm going to go into full manual mode. Okay. No more training wheels. So this is me completely free. Try, try, I'm kind of on your tail. Tell me when you're on my tail and I'm going to do a loop or a pirouette or something. Okay, I'm on your tail. Whee! Okay. And a loop. And I just lost you. I see you. <laughs> so I'm in full manual mode right now, completely off the training wheels. Most of my flying has been on the training wheels, but yeah. here I'm completely off of them. Well, just having fun, buzzing around. Although, my feed is a little bit glitchy. Okay. That must be you. I'm right behind you. I'm just going around with no respect whatsoever where you're at, so you just will have to find me. So I'm just dive bombing us. <laughs> and I'm going to do a full loop. And uh, whatever I feel like doing. This is, yeah, this is fun. Whee! <laughs> uh, I'm almost all the way through my battery, though, sadly. I'm trying to be conservative, but I have to have it at half throttle just barely to stay aloft. Okay, I'm going back to training wheels mode. Okay. Okay, and now that I'm back in training wheels mode, I'm setting up for landing. So get ready to follow me as I come to land. I'm okay. going to go through I'm, I'm the VTOL sequence. I'm so if you know airplanes, I'm on downwind. Downwind opposite us on the okay. south fence. I'm right on your tail. Okay, I'm turning down base wind. Or base. Now I'm on final. Okay, I'm a little ways behind you. Short final. Are you VTOL landing? Yeah, I'm VTOL landing right in the parking lot. I can only see it straight down my nose, so sorry if I land on you or something. Okay, I'm in the middle of the lot, so... And there we go. Alright! Boom! Oh, finally happened, man. That's pretty, that's actually pretty cool. So this, this is actually pretty cool, because we met at Washington, D.C. Uh, NPRM protest rally thing, and he had like a prototype of that. I don't think he'd even flown it. At no, that I hadn't even no. flown. And then now I'm here in Reno, chasing him around. What? That's pretty cool. That's Thanks pretty for coming cool. out. Thank Much you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Sir. And no broken airplanes. Any day you walk away from the flying field without pieces, it's a great day. That's right. It's slightly uh, less fun, but oh <laughs> no. <laughs> it's always fun building airplanes, but it's always better flying them and not crashing them. Than crashing them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned, and uh, I will see you again very soon. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles.